Hey, hope you're well. So in this one, I'm going to be taking some little bits of scraps, some offcuts, and I'm going to be making a simple little cross-cut jig and mitre jig that'll give your track saw, chop saw-like functions. Uh, so one of the things that I struggled with a little bit when I made my recent Mondrian-style patchwork table was cutting little pieces accurately. And I remembered that when I used to do the fitted furniture work, I had the same sort of problem, especially if you're just trimming back tiny little pieces. And I made myself a little crosscut jig for that. And it occurred to me that actually I could do the same thing for this, but improve on it a little bit as well. Let me show you what I mean. So the crosscut jigs are pretty simple thing, really. Uh, you've got a baseboard like this. This is about uh, 600 mil, 24 inches wide, about 10 inches deep, 250 mil. And you've got a top and a bottom rail. The top rail acts as a fence and the bottom rail just acts as support for your guide rail. And that's kind of all there is to it. You glue these down, you reference off the inside face of the top rail, so that's your fence. Make sure that's nice and square, and you put a couple of blocks in there for the rail to bear against, and you're in business. The problem comes when you try and turn this into a mitre cut as well because now that's got to come round to here this angle oops this angle gets pretty steep and you can find yourself running out of space at the end and of course the piece that's giving you the square cut is now underneath the guide rail i got around that in one that i made by making this whole thing deeper but what that meant is that you have an awful lot of space in the middle which means that the rail and the saw can dip and it gives you all kinds of issues. So what I've decided to do for this one is that instead of using little blocks like this, I'm actually going to drill holes and I'm going to use regular bench dogs. In fact, you can either use bench dogs or you can use our old friend, the PVC conduit pipe. Before we get to that though, I do need to work on the layout a little bit and I'm going to do that now and talk you through it as I go. So the top's nice and square and flush against the edge of the board on dogs and I'm just going to fix this bottom one down temporarily with a bit of double sided tape. I'm just going to run a little bit of masking tape in along these two. So if we want our first hole to be around here, say, for a 45, this means that the one on our top rail is going to be about here. And the bottom here for the 90. That's going to give us here for a cross cut, which is okay. And over here for the mitre, which is just about okay. Might have helped to be a little bit wider, but that'll do. So those are the sort of positions that we want. I'm going to drill a 20 mil hole out on my drill press. If you don't have a drill press, you can just use a, a regular hand drill. Just try and make it as perpendicular as you can. Okay, so that's turned out pretty well. I meant to say earlier as well that the, the fence and the batten balancer need to be as thick as the thickest material you're likely to cut, which is why I've got this 19mm veneered MDF, because that'll cover the fence of fibre cut as well. Anyway, we've got the holes drilled out, they're pretty good. Um, bench dogs, quad dogs fit in there really nicely. Oop. And the PVC conduit, a little bit loose, so I'll probably need a, a turn of tape around that just to nip that up. So what we've got anyway is uh, a couple of bands with holes in. The holes aren't really related to each other precisely. So what we're going to do, we're going to fix the top one down. We know where the cut line is going to be and we know where the bevel, the mitre cut line is going to be. So we can glue and pin that down and avoid those areas. Uh, and then we can 
sort out the bottom two, these aren't necessarily in the right proportion with each other. So I'm just gonna cut that one in half and put these two in independently uh, against a, another fence. It'll all become clear in a second. I'll show you what I mean. But for now, let's get some glue on this top one and a couple of nails. So while the glue sets on the fence, I'm just going to cut the bottom batten in half and I'll line up the cut line with the grooves in the bench. So quad dogs are fitting in there pretty nicely. Just going to pop a little, a few dabs of glue on the underside of this. I've got a little bit of scrap, which is about the right sort of size in there. When you add in the two squares that I'm going to be using, that pushes it back to almost bang on the right position. I'm going to flip that one over. And drop it in. We know roughly where it needs to be. And we use our rule, uh, the square, referencing off the inside face of the fence, of course. So that's square, so we just need to run that back. And that we know is absolutely square. And of course the other benefit of this is because you're just using regular bench dogs. You can use your Dave Stanton dog locks or your homemade DIY versions to lock your rail in place. So there we go, uh, a very, very simple little jig to make. Uh, no real effort involved. The only tricky part is perhaps drilling the holes. And as I say, you could do those easily handheld if you needed to. You get, a, you get a pretty fantastic 90 degree cut out of this. 
and not a bad mitre either. Uh, when would you want to use something like this? Well, if you haven't got a chop saw or a mitre saw, well, that would be a good time. And even if you have, maybe you've got it set up for something else like I have at the moment, and you just need to knock out something small or something quick. Um, great little thing to have, knock it around, shove it under the bench when you're not using it. If it gets damaged or lost, or thrown away by accident, you can make yourself another one really quickly and easily. But I'll call this one done for now. Thanks so much for taking a look. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. All right, take care. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you can do that by becoming a member at 10 Minute Workshop Plus. Plus is my new independent member platform over at 10minuteworkshop.com. There's lots of details there, or you could head up 10minuteworkshop.plus to sign up directly. It's a free sign up, but with additional benefits for members who are on a paid plan. Plus members have access to ad-free and sometimes extended versions of the public facing YouTube videos, as well as all kinds of exclusive content from behind the scenes snippets and outtakes to weekly vlogs and additional midweek content, discounts on 10-minute workshop products, free plans, plus a lively new members forum where you can get your questions answered or maybe provide some answers for other folks too. So if any or all of that sounds like your kind of thing, we'd love to have you on board and taking part. There are links down below as always. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.